Thanks so much, Paul. Um, hello, everybody. Um, and it's a privilege to be able to be here this afternoon to share some information with you all about uh, the Welcome Toolkit, in particular the Early Years Welcome Toolkit and how we have been using it in Bath and North East Somerset. So a little bit of background. Uh, my name is Becky Parker. I'm a specialist speech and language therapist. Um, I've been working in Baines now for around about 11 years. And I've been really lucky uh, to have been asked to uh, work within the Language for Life pilot project for around about two and a half years now. Um, so I've put some slides together to share with you some information about how Language for Life came together, who's involved, and also a little bit of information about um, some of the fantastic outcomes our children have achieved over the past two and a half years. And we're going to share some bit of information about how uh, we've engaged our reception classes in using the earliest toolkits. So thanks, Paul. Next slide. So I thought I'd start by giving a little bit of project context with you all. So the main reason the project was introduced uh, was due to the ongoing poor outcomes for children in receipts of free school meals at the end of their reception class year within Bath and North East Somerset or Baines as we call it. So in Baines, the attainment gap between the economically less advantaged children and their peers is wide and we found it has been very persistent. And in 2019, the outcomes in Baines were among the lowest of all local authorities in England. So when planning the project, we considered also a paper that was published by Dream Gross. Many of you may have heard of her. Um, she's a trailblazer within the early years and the identification of early years interventions and particularly around language communication. And she published a paper called Closing the Word Gap learning from five areas who have gained ground. And that was really key to help us to understand where to get started with our project. We also spent time looking at research in several areas that have already gained ground for the systemic language improvements. And this combined with the early years intervention identification need and the importance led us to selecting the early years welcome toolkit to use within our Language of Life pilot project. Thanks, Paul, next slide. So what is Language for Life? So like I said, Language for Life is a pilot project. It's been going now for two and a half years, coming to the end of our pilot project. And during the two and a half years of the pilot project, 23 earlier settings in Baines have uh, chosen to take part in the project. All of our earlier settings are childminders, their nurseries, their voluntary and charity-based preschools. And we have also had an addition where our reception classes have taken part in the project as well. Now, Language for Life is a multi-agency project, which is really important. So we work alongside other services within the local authority. And its main focus is around closing that persistent word gap, which impacts greatly on children's later outcomes. So the toolkit itself within our settings, within our earlier settings, really targets those children from 18 months up to around about five years or when they start school, or for those children taking part in the reception classes up to six years. So it's the whole age span of the Welcome Early Years Toolkit. Now in Language for Life, in our pilot project, we started our pilots in two key areas of the local authority. And we had a look at our earlier settings and we decided that our earlier settings would need to meet a criteria to start off with. So we looked for those settings who had a high percentage of children with two year funding and or early years pupil premium. And we also had a requirement that our earlier settings would need to feed into one of our five six primary schools which are part of another project which is called the primary empowerment project very similar to language for life it's also a funded project which aims to close that word gap and improve children's later outcomes uh, so once those earlier settings were identified we invited them to participate and all of our settings have maintained participation throughout the pilot project thanks paul next slide Okay, so who is involved in Language for Life? So these are our multi-agency partners. These are our uh, key stakeholders within uh, the Language for Life project. So our funders of the project, or our biggest funders of the project, are a charity, a local charity called St John's Foundation. They have been uh, 
they have been present in Bath for a very long time, many centuries, um, and they are trailblazing the way with finding uh, funding to be able to support local projects and helping those children from less advantaged backgrounds. We also have the local authority or the local council, Baines, and they are also providing some funding for the project. They've also provided our early year service team who are a vital part of the project team. We also have the HCRG care group who are my employers who provide the speech and language therapist for the team. And we're lucky enough to have an independent evaluator working alongside the projects and they are impact ed. Our most important partners are our 23 early year settings and the children and families involved. And it's really important that we all stay communicated, connected, and we all help the decision making within the project. Thanks, Paul. OK, so I thought it would be quite useful for you guys to see some of the impacts that we've gained so far just within the two to two and a half years of the pilot project. So within the first year of the project, so around about September, our settings had already received some training. They received the earliest toolkit, a couple of support visits from myself as a speech and language therapist, and they were set off to start screening the whole cohort of children in the earliest settings. So we had our first year, our first academic year's worth of data, which you can see here in the first graph. And we're very lucky that we were able to access and use the online report wizard alongside the welcome toolkit. And each of our earlier settings also had access to the online report wizard to help us to analyze and track the data from the welcome screening. So in the first assessment, you can see that 44% of the children were in the red zone, 43 in the amber and 13% were in the green zone. Then after an academic year's worth of screening and intervention, training and support, those numbers drop quite dramatically, which you can see in the graph. And by the end of the academic first year, so around about June, July time in 2022, we can see that 47% of children were in the green zone. We were lucky enough to continue for a second year of the pilot project, and that enabled us to compare the data from year one to year two of the project. So in the second year, which is the academic year we've just completed at the start of the year, so around about September time, all of our settings rescreen their children, and we can see that the numbers have dramatically changed already from our first year's worth of screening. We can see that the numbers have dropped from at the start of the first year, 44% of children in the red zone to 34% of children in the red zone. And we do have a cohort of children that would have started school. We also have a big cohort of new children that would have started in our earlier settings. But what we also take note of is a vast majority of children within the earlier settings have returned from the summer break having already had a whole year's worth of support from the Welcome Toolkit and the Language of Life project. So they have had an extra year ahead of some of their peers, which we think have had a dramatic impact on why we've got so many children starting in the green zone in our second year, the start of our second year. So the second year, we followed the same methodology of the project. The settings used the Welcome Toolkit to screen. The big book of ideas to be able to provide intervention. They had support from the project team. And a whole academic year later, so in the June, July summer term that we've just gone through, we can see those numbers have dramatically changed again. So we can see that 71% of our children around about June, July time were in the green zone, which is fabulous to see. Thanks, Paul. Next slide. Thank you. So the online report wizard, we found it really useful because we were able to pull off different types of graphs to help us to analyze our data and try and find the impact that we could help uh, our children and our families. So we were able to look at the school starters progress, which is really useful because part of the project is exploring how early intervention can have a positive impact for our children when they start school. So we can see here, we were able to take a graph that measured the progress of our children who had just started school in September, so September just gone, 2023. So from their input that they would have had from September 21 to August or June, July time, 23. So for some of those children, it would have been two whole years worth of uh, 
language of life support and welcome supports. But we know in early years, children do start their nursery settings at different times throughout the year. It depends when they get access to funding and also when their name appears on the waiting list and they can get into settings. Um, so some of those children have two full years worth of support, but for lots of our children, they would have done. But we can see here the number of children who have started school in September who have participated in our project and have used the welcome talk in the earlier settings. 78% of them started school in the green zone, which is fabulous to see how our earlier settings have made a huge impact using that toolkit. Thanks, Paul. OK, another really important graph that we're using uh, the report wizard to generate is measuring the early years pupil premium outcomes, which is really vital for our local authority and for measuring outcomes in our projects. So this graph here, we can see uh, how many children over the second year of the project who are in receipt of EYPP. Uh, and we can see how many of those children have moved through those color zones. So we can see that a uh, majority of children in Baines are, who are in receipt of EYPP and also TIA funding tend to be in the amber zone. And we can see that number dramatically dropping after a year's worth of intervention and support. So from 38% of children in the amber zone that dropped to 20% of children and a really lovely high number of 69% of children in receipt of EYPP um, in the green zone by the end of the academic year which is fabulous to see. Thanks, Paul. Okay, so how did we involve our reception classes? Now, we were very conscious that our reception classes are also our early years uh, foundation stage class. They are involved in our early years and we wanted to find a way that we can team up to support them because they will have received the first cohort of children who are taking part in the project and the welcome toolkit after the first academic year. And a big part of the transition that children receive in Baines um, is around documentation and passing on data from earlier setting to reception class setting. And the welcome was becoming a big focus of that. So we reached out to the project funders, stakeholders and partners, and we decided that for those five or six schools taking part in the primary empowerment project, so those schools that are also part of another project, those schools that have been identified as having one of the biggest attainment gaps in the local authority, we asked if they would like to participate in the project and all of them took up on the offer, which is fantastic to see. So they each received an early years welcome toolkit in their reception class. They also had a visit from myself as a speech and language therapist for three terms, once a term, where I was able to teach them about the toolkit uh, tool and expand on their knowledge of communication and overall language development and help them to embed the toolkit into their classrooms. And they each completed the screening and intervention cycles the whole academic year. And we could see using the report wizard that the progression of those children content continued and were maintained throughout the reception class year, which is fabulous. And we were also able to invite those reception classes to participate in the training sessions, the cluster events um, that all of our early years nursery class settings were already participating in, which is really lovely for them to have some peer support and networking as well, which is really important. Thanks, Paul. We've also gathered some lovely feedback. So a part of the Language of Life project is we're constantly gathering feedback, uh, looking at what we can change in terms of methodology and how the project is supporting our settings. And we've been given the um, ability to be able to make those changes quite quickly. And we can see that that has had a positive impact. So not just within our settings, but also from the services that we work around as well. So from our speech and language services, from the health visitors and also the local authority. We found that talking to some of our clinic leads and health visitors and speech and language therapy clinics, they said that a lot of their referrals from our earlier settings have become a lot more accurate. They become more specialist. And actually a lot of the children are coming to clinic already having had support from the big book of ideas um, from the screening process. So a lot of the children are starting ahead of the game and it's speeding up that kind of review cycle that we use. 
And then our local authority have also said that the earliest settings are using the welcome toolkit screening and data to be able to support the applications for EHCPs and support funding requests, inclusion support funding and transition support funding, which we use in Mains. Um, and that's had a really positive impact on the, children, the success of the children receiving that funding as well. Thanks, Paul. We've also been gathering feedback from our settings. We gather qualitative and quantitative data from our settings, but this is some of the setting uh, feedback that we've gathered just being on the ground and working with our settings. As with all our local authorities, those in Baines uh, working in earlier have faced a huge crisis around staffing retention um, and also finding new staff and training up new staff. But they found that despite all of these challenges, they continue to engage with the project and have absolutely loved using the Welcome Toolkit because they feel that they can see how much it's helped their children and their families. They can see the impact and the progress that it's made, which is fabulous to see how much they're fighting for that. Many of the settings have said that they found after uh, using the toolkit for two years, they can see how the quality of the children's interactions and the communication skills have increased compared to previous cohorts of children. And they found it really easy to embed the big book of ideas and the toolkits, kind of screening targets into their everyday planning. Um, so it's made it very accessible for all of our settings as well. Thanks, Paul. So what's next for Language for Life? So we are reaching very, very soon the end of our pilot project. So around about September 24, we were coming to the end of Language for Life as a pilot project. And we are currently making plans to uh, work towards helping uh, expand our project so that other earlier settings and reception classes can participate and have an opportunity to take part in Language for Life, to have their own toolkits. Um, so we're hoping to offer all settings and main that opportunity over a space of time. We will maintain that criteria that they will have to have children or cohort of children that are in receipt of EYPP and two year funding because we want to in Baines focus on that goal of closing that attainment gap between peers. And we're very sure that our methodology will pretty much stay the same depending on evidence base and that the strong focus on multi-agency working will be maintained as well as we work into the future. Thanks, Paul. I think this is the last slide. So a really, really big part of Language for Life is about the legacy that we leave. So we train up our settings. We don't want them to get too dependent on the support. We want to upskill them and provide them the knowledge and the skills that they can then carry on embedding the toolkit once we leave. So our main focus is working around the assess, plan, do, review cycle. And that embeds really beautifully in with the toolkit and the processes that it uses. We will stay focused on helping those children who don't currently have access to specialist speech and language intervention and those children who have uh, less or poorer outcomes compared to their peers. Um, and our main aim will be to close that attainment gap across veins. Fabulous. I think that's the end. Thank you very much, Paul.